Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in and coming back. Hope you're having a great day. I am having a great day because I've got on my Beer is Life t-shirt and uh, that makes it a great day. So today we're going to talk about Luminar and I'm going to talk about creating sort of dramatic and hopefully interesting looking street scene uh, type photos in Luminar with a few different tips. So let's dive into that. This is a photo from London, and I know a lot of my stuff is London. I just have so many photos from London. Um, and this is an area called Shad Thames, and Shad Thames is like an old wharf or warehouse district really close to the Tower Bridge. So if you know where Tower Bridge is, this is on the south side of the bridge, south side of the river, uh, just sort of to the, to the uh, so that I think to the east, if you will. Anyway, it's a great little area for walking around, all these old warehousey kind of things. Uh, and it's just fun. So I wandered these streets and it was gray and dreary and a little bit wet and uh, that's London for you, but I don't care. Uh, so here's what I did. I started with the develop filter and I've got three layers. I'm just gonna walk through the edits. I've already done them, so I'll just turn them on as I talk about them. The first thing I did is just bump up in the develop filter and this is just a, uh, a file I took out of Lightroom. I didn't get the raw file. Normally I would for my own editing use the raw develop filter, but Anyway, um, I just bumped up contrast and then brought down the highlights and whites a little bit and kicked up the clarity. So basically, I just went from that, which is my base uh, exposure unedited, to that. So it just gave it a little bit more contrast, a little bit more pop. And uh, then the next thing I did is just add the Accent AI filter, which, as you can see, sort of brightened the entire image, which Accent AI is good at doing. It's really good at sort of intelligently figuring out where things need to be. Uh, you know, brightened or darkened or whatever. So um, I love that filter. Uh, the next thing I did is structure. So I just clicked on structure to turn that on. I bumped it up pretty high. It says 58. And you can see the before and the after. I hope you can tell that in the video, but I just sort of wanted to create a little bit more crunchiness because, I mean, it's a, number one, the sky's completely blown out and we're going to deal with that in a minute. Um, but, you know, number two, streets, and it's a little bit wet and it's an old wharf warehouse area. To me, it just screams for kind of crunchiness, and so I wanted to amp that up a little bit. And the next thing I did then is the texture I added, and there you go. So uh, this is a texture for my own texture pack, and, and one of the things I wanted to talk about um, is when I first edited this, I initially went to you know add new layer, add image layer, and I said, let me go get a texture, and I grabbed this texture. Um, and then I realized, I was like, wait a minute, I actually prefer to add a texture with the texture overlay filter. And so I canceled that and just stuck the filter on here. Um, you can end up with fairly, you know, pretty much the same result. I just like it because you can flip the texture around, you can zoom in and out, you can increase or decrease the amount, you can kind of see what I did here. I also uh, did some brush masking. Let me hit that so I can show you. So I didn't apply it across the entire image pretty much, but as you can see, I reduced the opacity in some of these uh, sort of outer areas, and I, I went pre pretty much full capacity or opacity, I should say, in the sky, for example, because it was so blown out. And so that's my result. Basically, I just wanted to uh, add some structure and add a texture to create uh, create a little bit more of a interesting look to it, and it also gives it a little bit of a vintage feel, which I think fits that sort of scene quite well. And so. Now I was done with that layer and I said, you know what I want to do? I'm going to put a preset on and I do this a lot of times. So I went and added a next, uh, a new layer and I went and grabbed one of my own presets um, and that would be in my London Calling preset pack. I actually have one called Shad Thames uh, that I think looks good here. The other one I was experimenting with, Paddington looks kind of cool, um, a little orangey, but you can change that. And I thought this night on the Thames looked pretty good. It gave it some blue and all that, but the point is just that I, I often will do that. I'm gonna go back and get the preset that I used, but I'll often do that is, at, especially with textures, I'll go and then stick a new layer on and then put a preset on that layer, simply because, number one, uh, two reasons, really. Um, I like to look at a whole different uh, bunch of looks in a short amount of time, and a rolling through a preset pack, mine or somebody else's, I'm not trying to get you to buy mine. You're welcome to, of course, and if you have, thank you, I appreciate it, but, um, rolling through, you know, kind of scrolling through a bunch of presets like that. You know, I like the visual stimulation and I just want to scroll and say, all right, ooh, that catches my eye. Let's click it and see how it looks, you know, when I see it on the photo. So um, that's one reason. And then the second reason is sort of a derivative of that, which is it does a lot of stuff to a photo with one click. I'm a fan of presets. I think you know that. 
This preset has tone in it. It has matte look, which sort of enhanced that vintage and sort of faded out feel. It has some color balance and of course adjustable gradient, which must be bottom, yeah, so that affected the bottom of the photo. Uh, but I like uh, that look. And so I was pretty happy with the photo, but I wasn't completely happy. And this is just me being me. I like to keep going and saying, what else can I do? I like this look, it's kind of faded and vintage, which I think fits the scene, but you know, hey Jim, I'm not really sold on it, so I added another layer, and this is where I got in, and I just started doing some fun stuff with colors, and so I started with split toning, so let me turn that on, and you can see there's the before, more in the orange, uh, yellow, kind of warmer is probably a better way of saying it, more warmer toned, and with split toning, I went more cooler, right? I didn't do anything in the shadows. I just did stuff in the highlights, which mostly is the sky, some in the street, and I don't want to take away the warmth in the buildings. I think that yellow, kind of brownish look of the brick looks pretty cool to me, but I wanted to give it a little cooler tone, so that's where split toning came in. Um, and then I added color balance, and that added a lot more blue, um, and that's because if you look at it, um, if you haven't used Color Balance, by the way, great, absolutely just amazing filter in Luminar. I've got a couple of videos about it a while back. If you go to my main YouTube page and just click on videos, if you just scroll through the list, you'll see some stuff in there about Color Balance. Anyway, um, I, I took the shadows and kind of went more towards the cyan and away from the red. And then I took the shadows and went away from the yellow towards the blue. Um, and then I did the same thing with midtones away from uh, red towards cyan and away from yellow towards blue and I did the same thing in highlights. So basically did the same thing, different amounts, but in all three, shadows, midtones, and highlights, I went basically more blue. So there's the before. I like that look, but I wanted it a little bit cooler and there's the after. It's, it's creating a little bit more mood and drama, which I like in this kind of scene. And then I went and sort of completely did the opposite, which is I added golden hour because I felt like I'd given up too much of that yellow gold sort of warmth and I wanted to bring it back. And I think golden hour filter is great for that. It also, if you look in the sky, right up in here, it brings up some of that warmer color that's in the texture. Because if you recall, that texture is basically, it's a grungy kind of orange molded wall or whatever it was when I shot it. So it has some of that color in it. I like how that works. Um, and then I said, well, you know what? It's a little too saturated. I think it's more realistic if it's less saturated. So I opened uh, or added the saturation vibrance filter and just dragged that to the left a little bit. I actually might bring that back. You know, um, you know me, if you watch my videos, I love colors and, and they're expressive and fun. So I think I'll bring that back a little bit, maybe like negative 20 instead of negative 30. But I think at, at zero, uh, you know, without using the saturation filter like this, too saturated, I think, even for me, and I don't say that often. Um, vignette was my next thing, and that's really purely just, I wanted to create a little sense of drama. I want to draw the viewer's eye down the street. I think you're naturally drawn there because, you know, you got this um, walkway overhead between the buildings that sort of acts like a bar barrier, you know, visually. You got another one down here. I think you're naturally, your eye is naturally drawn down the street. I like the curve of the road here. I think your eye kind of wants to follow that. And I just wanted the vignette to help sort of lead you visually through that. And the truth is, without the vignette, the photo is a lot brighter. And I think it feels visually a little busier. And frankly, it is a busy photo. There's a lot of stuff to look at. But I want to sort of direct you that way. Even though I think you're naturally drawn that way, I think the vignette filter helps. And that's how I use the vignette a lot. I mean, it's designed basically to help focus the attention, but on street scenes and things, I think it's a, a great addition. Um, after doing that, I said, hey, how about some structure? I wanna amp that up, and so I did. Not a ton, just 25, but if you look at the before, even like the texture up here in the sky and the after, a bit more crunchy, and again, going for a little bit of a dramatic look, so I think the structure helped there. And then lastly, uh, smart tone, and that was, if you look at the before, that looks a little bit like I used the inner light filter on the vignette. Now I didn't, but uh, the center of the photo is quite a bit brighter, obviously because of the vignette, but it looks like it's a little too bright there. So I just went into tone and I took smart tone negative and that really smart tone acts in a way that if you're dragging it to the left, 
it's going to darken the parts that are kind of brighter without darkening the stuff that's already dark. Um, and so I like that. So one more before and after. Uh, and, and that's really it. I didn't do anything else with the tone filter. That was simply just trying to control that little bit of over brightness in the center. I think the vignette still works drawing your eye and the tone I think just helps bring it under control. So there's the brighter version without tone and there it is with tone. And that's really it my friends. Here's a before. Fairly boring to be honest. Uh, and when I shot this I was thinking and this is going to have to be a textured photo to create some interesting stuff. Also might look really cool as a black and white. Um, but I'm not a huge black and white fan. I like them but I don't make a lot of them. Um, and then there's this right. So there's the after and if you wanted to see a split screen before and after. So that's really it. Uh, base layer with a number of edits, uh, an additional layer with a preset, and then an additional layer with just more customization to sort of fine tune the image. And actually now that I look at it finished, I'm going to go back to saturation vibrance and take that back down a little bit. I think a little less saturated would work. And by the way, if you didn't know this, you can also add the HSL filter, which is right here. If for example, you say, well, the saturation is fine except for whatever it may be. And so you might come in here and say too much orange. And if I take that down, you can see it's impacting the buildings. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave it. But if you weren't aware of that, you can individually uh, reduce the saturation, luminance, or change the hue of individual color channels with the HSL filter. I didn't really need it for my purposes in this uh, video slash photo, but something to be aware of if you weren't aware. And that's it, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. And um, hey, maybe it's time for a beer. I don't know. Hope you're having a good uh, afternoon or evening or morning, whatever it is, wherever you are. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time, my friends. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. See you soon and adios.